Yes, uh, you are welcome for this amazing service and we are going to praise the name of the Lord with a song, Nothing is Impossible. I hope you are ready out there wherever you are watching from and I believe the Lord will speak to you through these very many songs and even the many things we're going to have. Nothing is impossible. church this morning and i believe that of course the lord is taking us through and that you know we are able to reach unto you even during this lockdown and that the lord is doing gracious things in our lives and so we have come together as the family of god in our father's 
presence to offer him praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive his holy word, and to bring before him the needs of the world, to ask his forgiveness of our sins, and to seek his grace that through his son Jesus Christ we may give ourselves to his service. And so now, children of God, can we say together the confession prayer. Almighty God, we confess that we have sinned in our thoughts, in our words, in what we have done, in what we have failed to do. We are like lost sheep, unable to help ourselves. Have mercy on us, Lord. Forgive those who confess their faults, as you promised. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now, church, may the almighty God, who forgives all who to repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you to eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And as the Lord taught us, so we pray, our Father in heaven, our, our Father, Father in heaven, heaven hallowed be your name, your, your kingdom, kingdom come, come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this our daily food, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And church, there's nothing good like being forgiven. And so we're going to get up on our feet. I know right there in our places where we are at homes, or even are probably at our marketplaces, and any other place that you can be. I just want to encourage you, get up on your feet, and let's God give the glory. There's nothing good like praising when you know you are forgiven and you are redeemed. So we're going to welcome our beautiful choir. And it's going to take us into praises and songs of worship as we adore God together. And then later we shall receive the reading of the word. We shall have a reading of scripture and the testimony of what the Lord is actually doing in our lives and in our church. Can you stay here and let's give God the praises and his glory. Amen.
Good morning, church, and praise the Lord. Our reading today is taken from the book of Genesis, chapter 50, starting from verse 14. Genesis chapter 50, from verse 14. Joseph reassures his brothers. After burying Jacob, Joseph returned to Egypt with his brothers and all who had accompanied him from his father's burial. But now their father was dead. Joseph's brothers became fearful. Now Joseph will show us his anger, pay us back for all the wrong we did to him, they said. So they sent this message to Joseph. Before your father died, he instructed us to say to you, Please forgive your brothers for the great wrong they did to you. For their sin in treating you so cruelly, so the servants of God, of your father, beg you to forgive our sin. When Joseph received the message, he broke down and wept. Then his brothers came and threw themselves down before Joseph. Look, we are your slaves, they said. But Joseph replied, Don't be afraid of me. Am I God that I can punish you? You intended to harm me, but God intended it all for good. He brought me to this position so I could save the lives of many people. No, don't be afraid. I will continue to take care of you and your children. So he reassured them by speaking kindly to them. Brothers and sisters, this is the word of the Lord. Praise the Lord, family of God. And so as we continue with the service, I will request you to stand up wherever you are and we shall confess together and claim in what we believe in. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and, and also with you. you. And so we shall continue in prayer. Let us continue in prayer. I request you that wherever you are, you will humble yourselves before God and we continue to seek his face together that he will answer us. Show us your constant love, O oh God, and grant us your salvation. O oh Lord, save our president and always teach his counselors wisdom. And Lord, let your servants be crossed with righteousness, and let your servants shout for joy. Lord, may you make your ways known upon the earth, and let your, all nations acknowledge your saving power, even during this COVID-19. Give your people the blessing of peace, and let your glory be all over the world. And Father, create pure hearts in us and do not take your Holy Spirit from us. And today is the sixth Sunday in Trinity. And so we pray, Lord, you have taught us that all our doing without love are nothing worth. Send your Holy Spirit and power into our hearts the most excellent gift of love and true bond of peace of all virtue without which whoever lives is counted dead before you grant this that we have asked for your, the sake of your only son Jesus Christ our Lord Amen and let us continue to thank God for the gift of a new day almighty God we thank you for the gift of a new day. Defend us, we pray, against all harm. Direct our thoughts, speech, and actions, and help us to serve you faithfully, that in our work and worship, we may always praise you. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. And we shall arise on our feet and give praises to the Lord, led by the choir. Children of God, get ready to dance. Hallelujah. I'm coming back to the start where you found me. Now I surrender, take me 
this is all I can read. You ready? Moving in the 
morning church i want to welcome you once again to our online service and thank you always for tuning in and uh, we thank god for the fire he has taken us and i want to share with us the message from the reading which we have already received from genesis chapter 50 and we are reading from verse 14 and I want to give it a topic that God intended it for good. God intended it for good. And I want us to focus on the life of Joseph. Through the book of Genesis, beginning from Genesis chapter 37, we see Joseph the beloved son of Jacob. And we know Jacob as the son of Isaac and the son of Abraham. And Joseph, one of the 12 sons now of Jacob, who was the beloved because he had been born of old age when Jacob was very old. And so he loved him and even made him a coat of many colors. And because he was the favorite, the brothers hated him. Just like sometimes 
such a things happen in our families. But the promises which God had given to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were continuing to be fulfilled through, through this young boy called Joseph. And Joseph begins having dreams. We always have dreams. And for him, they were not ordinary dreams. They were dreams from God. And he could not hide his dreams. He shared them with the siblings. And he had a habit of reporting everything, even from the field, from grazing. He was always reporting the bad things that they did. So when he added on these dreams... The boys, the brothers quickly also got the interpretation and said, so do you want to become a king over us? Not knowing that these dreams were intended for a good cause. God had a plan for the whole of Israel and it was going to manifest through the life of Joseph. And that's why I want this morning that we look at the life of Joseph the man who got dreams, the man who went from prison to the palace and later on saved the whole nation of Israel. When you read Genesis chapter 37, that's where we find these dreams. And then he was still a youth at 17 years, boastful of those dreams. But these brothers were like the dream killers. Sometimes you have to be aware of the dream killers, but also have the assurance that that which is born of God overcomes the world. And now, the brothers plot to kill Joseph, but Lubin says no, no. He feels no, this is, this is really bad. We can't shed innocent blood. And they sell him later into to the, to the Egyptians. And when he goes to Egypt, Joseph reaches there and he's called to serve in Potiphar's house. Potiphar was a commander and he was very rich. And when Joseph reaches there, he finds there a wife to Potiphar, who becomes a snare. When Joseph had obtained favor before God, and everything he was doing was very wonderful, he was excellent, he excelled, so that Potiphar put him in charge of everything, of everything in the house. But now Potiphar's wife admired Joseph and wanted to sleep with him. And this is the temptation that Joseph was also tested to see if really he feared God. And Potiphar's wife really wants Joseph to sleep with him and have sexual intercourse with him. But Joseph says, how can I sin against my God? He's not worried about sinning the mas uh, against the master, but sinning against God. What a commitment and a challenge as the fear of the Lord in Joseph's life. And you see what God intended for him. And because Potiphar's wife felt humiliated and hurt, of course, there was a case against Joseph that she wanted to rape her. And that's how Joseph ends into prison. And Joseph, when he reaches into the prison, he also finds other two men who had been in prison there. And all of us know that prison is not a good place to be. Even when they say stay home sometime, it's hard. But now Joseph is in a prison. And remember, he was the favorite from his father, but now he is in the prison. 
Is it also intended by God? Yes. The situation is hard. Is it also for a good purpose? Yes. God has a good plan for everything. And they are also in the prison. The two men there also get dreams. And God, the spirit of God that was upon Joseph, enables him to interpret the dreams. One was for the promotion of one of the prisoners after getting out. And when the prisoner is set free, he forgets about Joseph. Oh, he's forgotten. But God does not forget us. When Joseph even is in prison, God has not forgotten him. And because of answering such a dreams later on, also the king gets dreams. And the cupbearer whom he had interpreted the dream says, yes, in prison there is a man who has the spirit of God and he can interpret such a dreams for you. And when he interpreted the dreams, Joseph is now promoted from prison, he becomes the head, the prince, he becomes on the top leadership, second in command in the whole of Egypt. Glory to God. He had gone through various steps of which maybe his vision would say, no, his vision has died. This boy will no longer maybe is no longer in God's plan. When you go to prison, sometimes you say it is sin, but there are some people who are in, in prison innocently. He had gone to prison innocently. The situation, what I'm emphasizing here, the situation that you are in is even intended for good. God intends it for good. Remember, we read from Genesis chapter 50, and Joseph tells them, that don't be afraid. What you intended for bad, God intended it for good. Now it is coming to manifest that what the brothers, what Potiphar, what the prisoners were intending for bad, God intended it for good. What situation is in your life and is seeming to be bad as if it is coming from worse to the worst, but God intends it for his glory. For his glory. And what are you required to do so that that situation that you are in, that circumstance, shall bring God the glory? Later on we see, we shall see that later. Later on we see now famine coming into the whole of Egypt. And the whole of Israel and the brothers now move and they come to Egypt looking for food. Looking for food. And whom do they find there? Joseph, to cut the story short. You know he would send them back, but later on, finally, after even the death, he fully reveals his character. Here, this is what we read from verse 14 when it says, After burying Jacob, Joseph returned to Egypt with his brothers, all who had accompanied him for his father's burial. But now, because their father was dead, they feared. They feared Joseph. Isn't he going to revenge? Isn't he going to revenge on us? But this is not the heart of Joseph. Joseph is ready to forgive his brothers. After the situations he had gone through, he is ready to forgive his brothers. And that's what I want us to start looking at the life of Joseph, lessons that we learn from his life, that no matter how the situation is, God intends it for good. And there are some people who could have hurt you, who could have hurt you, but God also intended it for good. And what do you have to do? Forgive them. Joseph forgave the brothers. Can you forgive that person whom you have remembered? Who hurt you? Just forgive him. 
and forgive him completely and you will receive God's blessing. And secondly, there was a person of Potiphar's wife and who wanted to distract Joseph from the vision and Joseph her could not avoid but only to free. My brother, my sister who is listening, there are some situations which you need not only just to avoid but to free. Run away from them. Run away from those things which want to kill your dream. From those things that want to destroy what God has put into you. You are more than a conqueror. That seed which is in you, free from that. You know, even Moses had to free into the desert. It may look hard, but free. It was a luxurious place, but free. Free. Live. Live. Leave those things. Leave sleeping too much. Leave that alcohol. Leave that pornography. Leave that quarrel and debate. Free for your dream. Leave that nonsense. Let me call it the nonsense. And focus to what God has called you to do. And remember that no matter how undesirable your situation is, consider it as part of your training program to serving God. No matter the situation, consider it as a training program for serving God. Whatever you're going through is designed, is programmed as part of your testimony so that later you will use it as a testimony in serving God. And also we also go through some situations so that we learn working with people. Joseph had to forgive the brothers. Joseph knew how to serve people even at Potiphar's press. Hallelujah. No matter the event or circumstance, we need to know how to respond to them. Learn how to know how to respond to events Joseph had to free. That was an event that could destroy him. He fled from evil. Can you free from evil? Can you free from sin? And you need the grace of God. And before I close, I will ask that the grace of God shall come upon you that you free from all those bad habits and continue to pursue the dream, the purpose that God has called you for. Free from that bitterness and forgive. Joseph chose to forgive the brothers and forgive completely. And what do we need also to do from what we learn from Joseph? Being trustworthy and faithful. Joseph is known as a man of integrity. A man who was faithful even in the house of God and even under men. He was faithful. In Potiphar's, when he was in, put in charge of Potiphar's possession, he was faithful. He did not go to prison for stealing anything or for embezzling anything. He was faithful. What you, where you, wherever press you have been pressed, please be faithful. Be trustworthy. Your promotion will come later on. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and he will exalt you in due time. Learn how to work with people. This time when we are together in homes, some parents have never had time to interact with teenagers. Learn how to work with them. Children, obey your parents. Listen to them. Even at times when it seems hard, but that situation is designed to be part of your testimony. Later, and you say, I went through this. If Joseph could testify, if could Joseph could come now and testify, you'd want and say, what of this? But he had gone through a lot of things. Forgive those who have longed you. Free from anything that wants to destroy that dream. And focus on God. Be spiritually sensitive. Joseph says, how can I sin against my God? And he freed and God rewarded him. What was intended for bad, God intended it for good. When the brothers are thinking he's going to revenge on them, he forgives them. And he makes a wonderful statement 
On verse 21, he says, No, don't be afraid. I'll continue to take care of you and your children. I'll continue to take care of you and your children. You who is listening in, do not be afraid. God will continue to take care of you and even of your children. Children, God will take care of you. Worry not. Keep focused onto him. Lift up your voice to him and call upon him. Ask forgiveness of the sins. Forget the past and look forward to what God has called you to do. And I'm going to request us that we pray together as we conclude. If there is anybody whom you need to forgive, something that is holding you back from reaching your destiny, that you let go of that and continue to move on. That whichever even prison you may be in, God shall give you the endurance that you endure for a season and then victory comes on. So let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this morning and thank you for your word. What people intended for bad, for you it is intended for good. I pray, Heavenly Father, for that person who is listening in. Lord, you are watching them. I may not see them, but you know what they are struggling them, oh God. Some may feel as if they are in prison. Break, oh God, those chains of sin. Father, we repent and we release even those ones who hurt us. And we want your purpose to be fulfilled in our lives. And Father, I pray for those who are fearing that they shall not be afraid of anything, but they shall know that you shall take care of them because they are your beloved children. We glorify you. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord once again. That was a very powerful word from our vicar. She was talking about the word about Joseph. Can you imagine how we just have to flee from that sin? And fleeing is actually our way path to our victory. What a powerful someone that was. And of course, as we are honoring God with our hearts, we are even going to uh, give in into the house of the Lord. I want to thank you for being a very generous church. And of course, always giving in in the house of the Lord. And we are celebrating your generosity today. And as we're going to do it again, we're going to invite the choir, which is going to lead us into a very powerful and very nice song of praises as we give in into the house of the Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen.
Thank you, viewer, for giving in to the Lord. Thank you for giving in your time to listening to All Saints Church English Service. Thank you for everything you're doing. Thank you, even the team, which is on the cameras. You viewers, you don't see them, but they are doing a great work. So as you've given in, everybody, let us join together, and we shall pray, and we shall later on have a recession of him after I have blessed you. Let us pray. Loving Father, we thank you for a day in your presence is greater than a thousand elsewhere. And we thank you that in your presence there is fullness of joy and at your right hand there is pleasure evermore. We have been refreshed, we have been renewed by your word. And Father, we give our hearts as living sacrifices holy, acceptable before you as an act of worship. Can you to receive the sacrifice of praise? Can you to receive our hearts? And let even every heart can you to rejoice in your providence, O oh God. And thank you for you have provided unto us. Everything we have comes from you. And we give you tithes, offertories, and thanksgiving. For you have healed us. You've given us victory. I pray, Lord, that you bless every hand that has given in a good measure pressed down, shaken over, and overflowing. I pray, Heaven Father, that you shall always provide the seed for every sower so that they are able to abide, uh, abound in every grace. And church, may the peace of God that surpasses all human understanding guard your hearts and minds and keep you in the love of God and in the knowledge of His Son, Jesus Christ, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That blessing be upon you in your families now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Praise God once again. Thank you for being with us for the entire service. We want to appreciate you and we want to say that we shall be here again next Sunday. Don't feel afraid, of course, uh, to share with us on how the service was on our social media platforms. You can leave a comment on how the service was today. And we are going to be praying for you. We are going to reach out to you in prayer and in love. We want to say thank you. And can you keep with us? And let's keep in prayer and in faithfulness. And we shall receive the choir. And it is going to give us a very beautiful song as we close the service today. May God watch over you and bless you and keep you well. Until next Sunday, may God bless you. Every word of worship. Every word of worship in one accord. 
Every praise. Every praise. Every praise. Every praise. It's to our God. It's to our God. Come on, every praise we declare. Every praise. It's to our God. It's to our God. Every word of worship. Every word of worship. Take one of us. Every praise. Every praise. Every praise. Every praise. It's to our God. Come on, sing hallelujah, we say. Sing hallelujah to our God. To our God. Glory, hallelujah. Yes, who you are. 